Hi, my name is Sydney Estrada and I'm a mental health consultant at the Child Development Institute. In the past nine months, many children have been cooped up in the house and some have faced with additional challenges of prolonged sitting tasks such as virtual schooling. Staying inside and sitting for long periods of time are especially difficult for children who have sensory needs that have not been met. So let's think about our senses for a minute. Sound, touch, taste, sight, smell, and how our bodies feel and need to move all impact our brain processing, our emotional regulation, and how we function in the environment. In order to support children with skills such as attention, emotional regulation, communication, following simple rules, and retaining information, we must first provide their bodies with the sensory input that it needs. But please remember that sensory needs are unique to the child and may look different depending on how children process sensory stimulation. For example, some children may be oversensitive to sensory input or undersensitive to sensory input or maybe both. Children who are oversensitive may feel very overwhelmed or overstimulated by inputs such as loud noises, visual clutter, uncomfortable clothing, and can, be can become easily distracted. Children who are undersensitive may seek out more sensory stimulation, such as fidgeting, have trouble sitting still, chewing on objects or making sounds and noises. Um, and as an adult, you may resonate with some of these as well. So how can we support children's sensory needs during these unpredictable times? So here are some ways that we can. You can create a visual schedule to promote consistency and help manage expectations. We can create a visually calming space where a child can retreat to if they become overwhelmed. So we can think like maybe blank walls or with pictures of loved ones or maybe their favorite characters can be helpful too. Um, you can turn on calming music or have a loud dance party depending on what they need. You can also use a timer to designate play um, or quiet time. And we can explore new sensory experiences with food by making meal time fun and cooking together. Another thing is you could spend time playing outside for fresh air with boundaries that are discussed beforehand. Um, you could play with Play-Doh, kinetic sand, or a tub of dry ice. You can create a space outside for water play or have more frequent baths to increase the water play too. Um, you can create a sensory bin with all your child's favorite toys. You can create a designated area outside or in, inside the home where your child can dance, jump, spin, or run. Um, you can safely push or pull heavy objects together such as pillows, maybe a laundry basket, or you can even build a pillow fort. Um, we can offer your child a weighted blanket, but I want you to really think strategically about when you and your child would benefit from these sensory strategies. Do they need more activity in the morning and calming activities in the afternoon? Or will calm or soothing play better compare and prepare them for the day um, with more movement activities in the afternoon? So we wanna make sure we customize and all these sensory needs and these sensory um, activities based on your child's unique needs. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social for all things CCRC.